This is the new Renault Megane, and it's a little bit like when one of your oldest friends suddenly goes vegan because you can't get the Megane anymore with an internal combustion engine. It is electric only. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this car, talk you through the exterior design, show you the interior, see how practical the car is, take it for a drive, and of course, launch it. To see how quick it is from naught to 60 miles an hour, because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. And if you haven't done so already and you like car reviews, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. Buy, sell, car wow. Let's start off this video by talking about the Megane's design. So Renault has always had nice looking cars and this new one is no exception. It's sort of familiar, the design with like the sleek tail lamps there it's actually one led strip you've got a roof spoiler you've got contrasting shiny black trim down here to just make it look a bit more interesting and renault have revised their badge although try to make it look retro apparently not sure why that's retro but that's what they said in the press release anyhow it's a good looking car from the rear if you go for a launch edition you get a little bit of goldy strip down there Ooh. Moving down the sides, the launch edition and this mid-specification car come with 20-inch alloy wheels as standard. Twenties! On like a mid-level Megane. Nuts! The entry-level car gets 18s as standard. There are no 19-inch wheels. You have to jump all the way up to 20s. They do look lovely though. The rear door handles are integrated into this area of the car here. Look. So it all looks very stylish. Now, the top two-spec cars are available with a contrasting black roof, which does look good. And the mid and top-spec cars get chrome surrounds rather than black surrounds for the windows not sure what's going on with this plastic is it's supposed to mimic some carbon fiber i don't know at the front all looks pretty good i like the light design actually the way the lights are very thin and then it sort of blends into the curvy daytime running lights now if you have the top spec car once again you get a bit of gold down here other than that though all of the Megans pretty much look the same. I like the contours in the bonnet as well. I think it's a really good looking car, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. The question is, is it worth the asking price? So the new Renault Megane starts from £36,000. Now, if you think about buying a new car, you probably need to sell your current car, and you can do that through CarWow. Just upload some photos of your car, give a brief description, then our dealers will bid on your car, and you just pick the highest offer, and the dealer will come to your house, take the car away, and put the money straight into your account. It's dead easy. Renault's done a good job on the interior design of this car as well. I like the way you've got this cockpit effect, the way the screens wrap around you, the multi-contour dash, you've got fabric on it, which makes it look expensive. You've got some soft materials on the door, though the door tops are actually a bit scratchy. And you do end up putting your arm on there if you cruise about like that. Other materials are fine though. It's only when you get really low down that things start to get a little bit too scratchy, but it's what you expect from a car in this class. Driving position is good as well. Nice steering wheel. Doesn't look perfectly round. It's sort of like, hexagonal but there's a lot of adjustment in it so i can't complain about that and you can alter the height of the seat quite easily though you do rub your knuckles on the actual door though i just noticed that in terms of the infotainment system well you've got a big digital drivers display there lots of information though the central infotainment system is quite small it's not bad you can see enough that you need to see on there but in other markets you can get a bigger screen but not in the uk for some reason it's quite easy to use and you can swipe through things pretty easily and it's responsive plus you get google so you've got google maps google play you've got google assistant so you can i don't want to say the words h-e-y-g-o-o-g-l-e otherwise she'll pipe up one slight problem is though that the maps seem to just be in this normal basic view i don't think it has satellite view maps which i like so i'm probably going to have to just connect my phone and use android auto and you can do that wirelessly as you can apple carplay now there's some good features in this actually so you can do things like change the color of the ambient lighting and there's 48 different colors to choose from crazy it's quite a lot look you can actually have it so it's changing constantly throughout the day it just does it at will other things you can do in here is alter the noise that you get from the parking sensors look you can change the sound how odd let's move on to storage right so underneath here you have an all right storage area then you've got your usb c ports there they're in a bit of an awkward place really because if you have your phone like attached like that to charge it you can't you know that's no good and then when you're reaching for like opening that up you end up catching your hands on the usb cable still there's other places to charge your phone down here that you will have to use the old-fashioned 12 volter but look this is configurable you can move these bits about as you want to use them as cup holders if you've got really big bottles such as this will that fit under there let's find out come on this is a really important test 
Mm, this doesn't fully fit because this bit sticks out, which is actually your wireless charging. So you could charge your phone there, it's just that wireless takes ages, doesn't it? And you don't get wireless charging on the entry level car is a bit of a shame other than that though it is really well equipped because the standard all models gets things like the heated steering wheel and heated seats here in the front anyway i'm going to continue with storage because the glove box is only adequate it's not the full size of the door though the door bins which are actually lined with felt both here in the front and in the back to stop things rattling about are quite big so i can fit the big bottle in there overall though yeah this is a pretty decent cabin and there's another thing i should point out as well the seats I like the look of the seats. So these are made from recycled materials. And unfortunately on the entry level car, you just get black seats. You don't get these nice blue ones, but the mid spec and the top spec version do get them. And there's even, look, nice fixed anchor points here in the front. Here in the back, knee room is fine. Headroom is fine. However, foot space is cramped, even though you've got a completely flat floor. Now the battery's underneath the floor and it's about 110 millimeters thick. However, even though it's quite a thin battery, in order to create the headroom, they've had to mount the seat quite low. And as a result, you can see I haven't got much under thigh support. And when you combine that with the cramped foot space, it's not the comfiest car to sit in the back of. Now, if you try and fit three in the back at once, it's quite narrow, so it's a bit of a squeeze for everyone. And the fact that this roof kind of like curves up like that, people on the outer seats end up hitting the head against that. When it comes to fitting a baby seat though, much better. I love the Isofix anchor covers, very easy to get to, nice wide openings as well. So it's super easy to fit a baby seat in here. And there is enough room to fit a bulky rear facing seat without having to move the passenger chair in the front forward that much. That is good. What's also good is that, look, we've got some decent sized pockets here. We've got decent sized door bins in the back. What's not so good though, is that while you do get USB-C ports here in the rear, you don't get them on the entry level car. Other things that aren't so good, there's no armrest or through loading. And look at this. The back windows didn't go down that far. I tell you what, a Kia Nero is more practical here in the back seats. Now, if you do need some help deciding which car to buy and you want to make sure you're paying a fair price for it, check out Carwan. You can read our reviews and check out the latest offers on all the newest cars. Now, to do that, just simply Google Help Me Car Wow and my team and I'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price. Now, let's check out the boot. So, to open it, there's this very little button to press. Tiny. Although it does keep the design looking nice. Now, the actual capacity of the boot is 440 litres, which is pretty big. A Kia Nero's is slightly bigger, about 10% bigger, but something like a Cupra Bourne's, about 20% smaller. Thing is though, while the literage number is good, you don't go around just carrying litres, do you? You carry things. And because this boot gets its volume through its depth rather than its depth that way, that should be length probably. It's not so good for carrying bigger items. Also, there's this huge, huge, huge load lip to lift stuff over. It's fine when you've got an empty suitcase like I have for demonstration purposes, but if it's something heavy, you are at risk of doing your lower back in. Now, underneath here, look, there's a little toggle. You can see it's a good place to keep your charging cables. I like that. What I like less though is when you fold down the rear seats, you'll see because there's no false floor you, like you get on some competitors to rise it up, there's a massive ridge there. So when you are trying to push heavy items to the front, oh, you're not going to be able to. You're going to have to go round the back, lift and leave them up and all that kind of shenanigans. Also, another problem I have with this car is that some other electric cars have boots under their bonnets because you don't have an internal combustion engine there. This one doesn't though. It's all taken up with the electrical stuff. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the new Renault Megane. While you have grab handles for the rear passengers, which is great, for some reason, Renault hasn't fitted one for the front passenger. Probably the person who needs it most. The rear window is quite wide, but very narrow. As a result, they've had to fit quite a small rear window wiper. For instance, look, I wet it there. Can you see, it only ends up cleaning very small portal if your rear window's covered in rain or grime. I hate it when car manufacturers don't just fit little guys for the seat belts to keep them in place when you fold the seats down. Because that always happens. And believe me, whenever you fold the seat down, you always forget about that. So it does, in fact, always happen. I guarantee it. There are too many levers on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. So you have your normal windscreen wipers, it's fine. But then you have your drive select lever there and it's quite close to that that sometimes you knock it when you're selecting mode 
And then Renault also has the controls for the stereo here, just below as well. Too much going on here, people, too much. There's quite a big ridge here on the side of the roof. And when you're getting in and out like that, or maybe say dealing with the baby in a baby seat, you often bang your back of your head like that because it just dips down further than you imagine it actually would. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. You have a quick release backrest for the front seat so you can just put the lever and get it into the position you want exactly and quickly. I'm not going to have it there, I'm going to have it there. This car comes with 22 kilowatt AC charging as standard, which is really handy if you have to use public charging. A lot of cars actually only have 11 kilowatts, which is just too slow. You get volume controls for the indicator noise. Listen, that's it high. That's it low. I'll probably go with somewhere in the middle. All cars get keyless go as standard. And I like the fact that the populated door handles have this little extra bit on them there, so they're actually easier to open than a lot of other poppy door handles. Yeah. Just like a Porsche, the driving mode button on this Megane is on the steering wheel, which is much easier to use when you're driving. Also, there's a favorite button there, which you can set to five different things. And one of them is to turn on both heated seats at once, which is quite useful if you've got a front passenger and it's cold and you want to be courteous. And then there is the fact that the lane keeping assist button there is easy to get to. So if you're driving down a country road and occasionally crossing the line and it's beeping like crazy, you can quickly turn it off without having to dig about through some menus like you have to in some other cars. The new Renault Megane E-Tech, as it's properly called, everyone just call it the Megane. Anyway, it comes with a 60 kilowatt hour battery, which gives a claimed range of 280 miles. It's front wheel drive and the motor that powers the front wheels puts out 217 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque, which is good for a top speed of 99 miles an hour and 0 to 60 in 7.5 seconds. But what will it really do? Well, I'm going to find out in a bit when I launch it. Now, there's three different trim levels that you can get on this car. So what I'm going to do now is configure my favorite Megane E-Tech using the CarWow configurator. You can also use this to see what offers are available on this car or other cars. Now, if you want to see what my favorite Megane is and the color that I'd have out of the five different choices, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below to check out the CarWow configurator. Let's see how this Megane drives, starting off within town. So what I'm going to do is pull up on these paddles here to put it into maximum regen mode. Obviously, there's no gearbox. This is just for the regen. So when I lift off the accelerator, it slows the car quite severely. Though it never fully stops. If you want to fully stop it, you have to hit the actual brake. And I must say the brakes feel a little bit oversensitive. You only have to brush them and you're braking. Once you get used to that, they do seem quite progressive though, which is good. Then there's the maneuverability. So it's very maneuverable, this car. Turning circle, 10.4 meters, which is pretty much the same as similar electric cars like the Volkswagen ID3. So yeah, you have no problem making U-turns. U-turn if you want to. Also, I find the steering quite light for in town, which is good and visibly forward that's pretty decent good sized door mirrors what's not good though is if you're at the back window it's small it's like a letterbox and when you put out those kind of filter junctions oh, the blind spot is terrible from the rear pillar the last thing for me to tell you about is the suspension so often electric cars are very heavy and so they have to have stiff suspension to stop them like wallowing this one is relatively light for an electric car, weighs in at 1,700 kilos. As a result, the suspension isn't overly firm. It has a torque feeling to it, but it's not uncomfortable. It actually feels quite sophisticated. Let's see what the pickup is like from 40 miles an hour, say if you're going on a faster road or motorway. So, flooring it at 40. Yeah, oh yeah, pickup's good. Bit of a slight twitch from the steering wheel when the power comes in because obviously this is front wheel drive but it doesn't feel unruly. And when you're cruising along at 70, it's reasonably quiet in here. So Renault's done a lot of work to make it as quiet as possible. Get a little bit of woo 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 noise. From, <laughs> what is a woo 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 noise? <laughs> anyway, you get that slight reverberation around the cabin, which means that if you want to talk, you have to raise your voice ever, 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 ever so slightly. But cruising on the motorway, you'll get around three 0.4 miles per kilowatt hour, which will give you a range of over 200 miles. This car is actually only averaging three miles per kilowatt hour in total. Must have been driven quite hard because that works out to a range of 180 miles, which is quite a bit down on the claimed 280. But I think that's whoever has had this car last. What was that? I'm trying to finish the line before swatting it. Last thing to do, test this car on a country road. So what I'm gonna do straight away 
is put the car's regen mode into the second setting. You can turn it all the way off, so you basically roll, which you don't want. You want some kind of like braking when you lift off the accelerator, so setting two is good, and it feels quite natural. In fact, how this goes down a twisty road is quite natural. I like it, the steering feels pretty responsive and accurate. I can make it heavier by putting the car into sports mode, so a bit more weight to the steering, and the throttle response is sharpened up, give me a bit more zip. So it feels a little bit more flighty at the slightest press of the pedal. I think comfort works best really. It doesn't affect the handling at all, it just feels more natural overall. Also, you don't want the throttle to be too enthusiastic when you come out of a corner. Because this is front wheel drive, if it's a little bit wet, when you put your foot down, it can spin up the front wheels. And that's one of the things you see. The MG4 is rear drive, and it just feels more sporty in the way that it pushes you out of a corner rather than pulls you. And it's a bit better putting its traction down. And that makes the MG just a bit more fun. This isn't bad though. This is not bad. Renault says this car will do 0-60 in 7.5 seconds, but can it really? Let's find out with the specialist Tommy Gear now. Very mild takeoff, very, very mild. It's building now though. Oh yeah, that's better. Here we go. Why did I doubt them? It says here, 6.94 seconds. Did a sub seven seconds. Yeah, the power really builds. Quite nice. So then what's my final verdict on the new Renault Megane E-Tech? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if you need to carry larger rear passengers, you should probably avoid it because the space in the back isn't that great. However, for everyone else, you should shortlist it because this is a stylish, good to drive electric hatchback. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did give it a like, let me know what you think about my verdict in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to subscribe to CarWow. Make sure you do it if you haven't done so already and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on.